do that. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is in the world that you happen to, to be. It is uh, a beautifully sunny day here in Dublin today, which is great. And thank you for taking the time to, to join this webinar where we're going to be discussing some aspects of off-campus accommodation. I mentioned some advice, some of the do's and don'ts, some of the things to watch out for. Um, we are recording this and we'll make it available afterwards. Also, if you do have questions, please pop them into chat. My colleague Justine will get back to you or we will look to address them towards the end of today's session. So I suppose first things first, some of the things that we're kind of going to talk about air, the areas of Dublin, so the geography, where um, to probably look for accommodation, some of the things to take into consideration around transportation, the types of accommodation that are available, um, some points to note, scams, unfortunately, they are a reality, and then the, the Q&A. Um, so uh, the, the rest of it, uh, you can see there, if you have very specific questions in relation to your own application, international.office at dcu.e. If it's in relation to on-campus accommodation, campus.residences at dcu.ie. So I suppose that the first thing to kind of talk about just is in terms of the geography of Dublin and, and where to, you know, DCU is located and where to look for accommodation. So Dublin is divided north and south by the River Liffey. And um, in essence, the, uh, it's divided into numbered areas. The odd numbers are on the north side, the even numbers are on the south side. Um, and DCU is located here in Dublin 9, okay? Um, that is where, where DCU is located. So it's, it's reasonably close to the city centre. Dublin 1 and Dublin 2 are considered the city centre. Now, because it's Ireland and uh, not, uh, you know, uh, Germany or some logical countries, Dublin 7 and Dublin 8 are closer to the city centre than Dublin uh, 6 and, and Dublin 3. Um, but essentially, this is DCU is located here on the north side of the city in, in Dublin 9. Um, so I suppose when you're looking for accommodation, ideally, uh, Dublin 9 would be possibly where you're looking. Um, but you can see Dublin 7, Dublin 1, Dublin 3, um, Dublin 11. Um, but we're also going to talk about transportation routes because there are a lot of different transportation routes in um, to DCU. It's really well served by public transport. But just to, to give you an idea of the geography of Dublin, that is essentially when you see people refer to Dublin 6 or Dublin 10 or Dublin 9 and, and you're wondering what it means. Well, generally, the odd numbers are on the north side of the city and the lower the number, the closer it is to the, the city centre. But as I said, you can see here that Dublin 9 is actually pretty close to the city centre and Dublin 7 is very close to the city centre. So that's just something to bear in mind in terms of the postal districts and, and where your accommodation might be located. Um, so the, the area is probably in Dublin 9, um, you know, to, if you're looking to live close to, to DCU, Ballymun, Beaumont, Drumcondra, Griffith Avenue, Santry and Whitehall, those are the areas in, in Dublin um, 9, I actually live in Whitehall myself, it's a lovely area, Dublin 7 in Fibsborough, another really nice area, Artane, Clantar Fairview, um, and Dublin 11, West Ballymun, and Glass Nevin. So there, you can see there are place names within the, the postal codes. So that's just a, around the, uh, the location. And um, we, uh, to just to consider, I mentioned around transportation, okay? So Dublin bus, Dublin is really well served by the um, bus service. And the bus service is actually undergoing a little bit of a change this um, summer. So they're changing some of the numbers, but they're actually going to be even more bus routes. And DCU is located on um, a 24 hour public transport, public transport bus route. So it's actually um, very, very convenient in that respect. It's also 
very easy to get to the airport from um, DCU and its surrounding areas um, by bus. So if I am ever going to the airport, I tend to use the bus rather than a taxi because it's, um, it's easier. You, there's a, a Dublin bus app and generally all the bus stops in Ireland also are in Ireland in Dublin have the, the time, the, the route that's coming up, the time that you're going to, to be waiting for it. In order to pay for the bus, and this will be covered at orientation, you use a leap card and you can pay cash, but it's coins only. The other forms of public transport in Dublin are the DART which is an electric train and it runs along the, the coastline mainly, and also the Lewis, which is a, a light rail, um, it's a tram system that runs throughout uh, the, the city. But the most common, um, I suppose, uh, way to travel by public transport is uh, Dublin bus and it goes throughout the suburbs. So uh, that's why I suppose allows students um, to, to go into DCU. So I mentioned earlier that DCU is very well served by public transport, and this is what I mean. So you can see the various different Dublin bus routes that um, lead into to DCU, all of the, the different numbers um, that are there, the 4, 9, 11, the 13, um, and the others. There's also, um, you know, the bus Aaron, which are the national routes, which go out further. Um, and there are the, the rail links as well. So Drumcondra Station um, being the, the closest to DCU. But I think that hopefully helps give you some sense of how well connected um, DCU is but, uh, to public transport. So that if you do not get accommodation directly in the vicinity of DCU, there are a lot of options, but it is something that you will have to consider if you are getting off campus accommodation. And again, I will make these available to you so that you can see these. The other thing is, as I mentioned, they are changing some of the bus numbers, but they're actually going to be even more buses available. They will run, there'll be more bus routes, they will run more frequently, and they're extending the hours as well. So it's actually all good news on the, the bus front. So I suppose then if we move on to kind of the, the different types of accommodation. So there's purpose-built student accommodation. This tends to be similar to kind of on-campus accommodation. It does tend to be a little um, bit more uh, expensive. It tends to be all kind of encompassing in terms of you pay a fee and then that fee includes your um, electricity, your heating, your Wi-Fi and, and things like that. So you can see here, there's a number of them that are located pretty close to, to DCU, uh, Shannon Square, Gateway, um, Hazelwood, um, so a number of, of different ones um, that are located very close to, to DCU in terms of the Shannon Square, some of them that are further away, and then you would have to consider um, the transportation costs with that. But they, they tend, to, um, you know, they are, I suppose, safe, secure, they generally have somebody on reception or security staff available around the clock. Um, you do generally have to pay for a semester or for a year up front, um, and they do tend to, you know, be a little bit on the pricier side, but you know that your accommodation is there. Generally with these, you get your own room, your own bathroom, and then there is a shared living space. Um, and there are a number of, uh, of them um, that are going to, to be um, available. This is just some of them. There are others uh, available as well. Um, there have been a huge number of them built in Dublin over the past few years. Um, they are generally all single occupancy. Um, so um, it's one bed, so you get your own, your own bed, again, your own bathroom, and then a shared living space in these sorts of um, uh, purpose-built student accommodation. So um, again, these are just some of, some of them to give you an idea, but if you look for purpose-built student accommodation in Dublin, you will see um, there are an, a number of different ones located in and around um, the city. In terms of moving on then to private rented accommodation, because I know there was uh, questions around sharing or for couples or things like that. Um, 
this is probably going to to be um you know if you're looking to go down this route this is where you're going to look so again the, the most common place to look is daft.e but to say it is it's very difficult to to get to sort accommodation a private rented accommodation before you come to Ireland, okay? Because there is huge demand for accommodation in Dublin. And so um, they, a lot of times they don't respond to emails. They tend to have phone numbers on there. They respond to, to people who call them up first. Places tend to go pretty quickly. Um, so it's really kind of letting you know about these so that, you know, when you come to Dublin, they are available um, to, to you and you can check it out. It will be very difficult, and we're going to talk about scams a little bit later. But daft is definitely what the vast majority of people would use in order to find private rent accommodation. It's what I would have used when I first came to, to Dublin. I used it on a number of different occasions. Um, and there are different aspects to daft. So some you can look to rent. Um, an entire apartment if there are a number of people looking to share together. Um, you can also look to share, uh, to get a room. Um, so maybe somebody already has an apartment or a house and they're looking to just rent out one or two rooms, they can um, put it up there um, as, as well. Um, so that is what is uh, available. I would say there are a number of different ones you can check here. DAF probably the most common, let.e as well and uh, college uh, cribs. And you can see there, there, there are things that you need to consider um, uh, when, when you're looking for private rent and accommodation. So just some things, some of these are gonna be very common sense and you're gonna to, to know it, but um, sometimes people go on and um, you, know, you might see the price and, um, and, and you think the price is great, but it can be just for a bedroom rather than for the whole apartment. Um, you also need to consider the utilities cost. Is that included in the rent? Um, so the rent can look great, but then there might be charges for electricity, for gas, for internet. So what is the, the total cost? The, the laundry facilities are something else um, that you need to consider, um, I suppose, is in terms of um, are there laundry facilities in the apartment or are they maybe in the building? Is there a cost for them? Um, you want to consider public transportation. Um, you, you need to consider, are there any rules about guests? So some another type of accommodation that we haven't really mentioned because it's, it's less common now is host family accommodation. So sometimes families rent out a room in, in their family home. Um, but a lot of times that can just be from Monday to Friday, so it doesn't suit international students, but there are some, some available, but those um, host families would tend to have rules around having guests over, um, whether it is um, to visit or whether it is um, to, to, to stay over. So that's something just to, to bear in mind. Um, then in, in terms of things, I suppose, when you're, you're viewing the, the apartment, um, you know, is there Wi-Fi available or is that something that you're going to have to set up because there can be a cost available to that? Uh, remember that we have seasons in Ireland, so it changes. So you're going to be coming to Ireland in the in late summer, probably in August or early September, which is still late summer here. Um, the, it will get colder um, in terms of heating. Is it, is it storage heating? Is it central heating? How do they, they heat it? Um, in terms of safety, you want to consider around smoke detectors and, and things like that. You also, I, I would always, things I always checked were the size of the refrigerator um, and the water pressure, because I think those are two things that can be uh, really, really uh, important. You want to make sure things work um, and uh, you want to consider the deposit as well. What, what kind of a deposit, sorry, are they looking for? How much of a deposit are they looking for? Um, those are going to be really, really important to you as well. So I suppose like some of the advice then is around having a clear budget, um, you know, to, to know what you're looking for so that you can input that into DAFT. You can say kind of what your budget is. Um, ideally, you're going to look for um, areas that are close to DCU or that have direct bus routes um, because you prefer not to have to, to change buses on, on the way. And as I said, there are a number of direct 
um, bus routes. Um, accommodation demand in Dublin is high. It, it's a booming city. The economy is booming. We have people coming here, um, not just to study, but to work as well. So there definitely is. So you will have to put some work into finding accommodation. Um, I would always say read through contracts or leases in, in detail to make sure that you know um, what the terms and conditions are. Um, if you did have to move out, is there a charge for that? Or do they expect you to pay the full lease? Um, so that's something to bear in mind. Um, and, and also I, I mentioned in terms of it's very difficult to like liaise with the private landlords via email um, because they, you know, it's easier for them to, to do it um, by, by phone. So a lot of this is really going to come down to when you are in Dublin. So just bear that in mind. Now, I suppose, look, when it comes to, to scams, <laughs> It, it's a reality. It, it happens uh, everywhere. And what I would say is things to, to look out for. OK, so a lot of times you might see things posted on in Facebook groups or, or elsewhere or or even sometimes in WhatsApp groups, somebody joins and it all seems great. They say they have a place available um, or they message you and say, hey, because they might have seen you post saying, hey, I'm looking for accommodation. They say, oh, are you still looking for accommodation? And uh, they, they make you an offer um, that is, you know, seems fantastic, right? Uh, and, but they always want the money quickly, okay? Um, a lot of times they can be out of town. So what they'll do is they'll say, oh, I have an apartment in Dublin. I'm actually in Barcelona in Spain for the year. Um, if you just transfer me the money um, to this account, um, then it will be fine. And sometimes it's even a third account. It can be that they say the apartment's in Dublin. They're in Spain for the year working, living there. Um, but the apartment is available. But you just need to transfer the money to this Dutch account. And then what happens is that if it is a scam, the Irish police say, well, the money went to the Netherlands. Um, the Dutch police say, well, the person lives in Spain, the apartment's in Dublin, there's nothing we can do. And the Spanish police say, well, the money went to Spain, the apartment's in Dublin, there's nothing we can do. So these are things to look out for. Not everybody is out to, to scam you, but it's important that you're aware that they, they can happen, they do happen. Um, they, scammers tend to get really annoyed if you ask a lot of questions. Um, they, they just want to get you to transfer the money as quickly as possible um, so that they have it and then they can move on. They disappear, they delete a profile and you can never find them again. So these are things to, to be wary of. As I say, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And they're never available to show you an apartment. So there's some reason why they can't um, show you an apartment generally. Um, but but even um, where they can just be very wary, particularly around pr the private uh, rented market, obviously the purpose built student accommodation or with Airbnb, you know where your money um, you know, is being held in escrow. So it's going to be OK. But um, I think it is it's if you're looking at the private rental market, I would always say never transfer money without seeing an apartment in person. I think that's really important. That's really um, for the end uh, of in terms of the do's and don'ts. Um, we have a, a many more webinars kind of coming up um, it, later this month, student support, airport arrival and immigration, orientation and registration, where we'll talk you through that process and, and what to, to look for. Um, in terms of questions, you can email the, the international office. And also we are very active on uh, social media. So I suppose um, in terms of questions, happy to, to look to take any questions that um, people may have um, at um, this point. And uh, if you are, I, I know some people are saying they might not be getting the um, emails. If uh, you can email international.office at dcu.ie, we will look to get them out uh, to you. But you can register on the, the website for all of the, the webinars, they, the, web, the registration links are available there. Um, so you, you can get those um, uh, on, the, on this website here. So you'll be able to, uh, to find it. Um, 
I know there are lots of people talking about um, some of the looking for um, the accommodation or for the WhatsApp groups. Um, just mean I don't know if there's anything you saw that came through in chat that we need to um, that we need to to be conscious of. Um, Colin, there were mainly a question in regards to the pricing and you know how to get to the campus. If you pretty much covered those ones. We do have some specific questions in terms of public accommodation. So I think you know it's best for the students to send an email to the international office inbox for any questions in regards to you know specific questions again for your profile or for your applications. And we don't really have a gen uh, we don't really have any specific questions right now. So most of them are actually pretty much answered in the presentation itself. Okay. Um, certainly, I saw there was somebody um, around rising prices. Yes, um, world events have definitely led to an increase um, in energy prices. So that is probably somebody. Um, and um, the uh, just bear that in mind. Um, we talked in terms of getting from the off-campus accommodation. You know, some of them are going to be walking distance. Some of them will be public transport. Um, in terms of the average rent, it really, really depends um, because um, it, it can it varies on the type of accommodation. It depends on how many um, rooms are in the accommodation. So it, it does really, really vary and um, bear that in mind. Um, Aspen, I see somebody's asking around that. It's relatively, it's up in Ballymun. Um, I would say it's probably a 25 minute walk to, to DCU, uh, 30 minutes maybe. Um, I would consider that pretty um, pretty close uh, to, be, to be honest, that, that's what I would say. Um, I, I don't know the exact date of the, the lottery for on-campus accommodation. Campus.residences at dcu.ie will be able to provide you with that. Um, so, uh, but I, I believe it should all be happening uh, pretty soon. Um, in, in terms of, I suppose, like areas, um, un unsafe areas, it's a major city. Um, so I, I would always be um, be conscious of that. I would also be conscious of people on, on the internet make things out to be really, really unsafe when that isn't the case. I've been living in Dublin for 17 years. Um, I have seen trouble in the city twice uh, on those occasions. Um, like everywhere, you need to, to, to bear that in mind. Um, I, I would say um, parts of, parts of uh, maybe Finglas um, are, are areas just to, to be cautious of. I would always say to, you know, do, do your research, um, but don't just take one comment on the internet to mean that it, it, that is the case, okay? So see an address, look and see what it might, what it might, uh, what the area might be like. Um, but just because one person says something on uh, Reddit, that does not mean that it is um, the absolute uh, truth. OK, so so be um, be conscious of that. Um, and uh, in, in terms of finding the purpose built student accommodation, if you Google purpose built student accommodation uh, in in Dublin, you will find a, an awful lot of them. There are there are a significant number of them that have, as I said, been built. Um, you you apply through their own websites and um, they generally look for your offer letter to ensure that you are um, uh, a student. Um, just trying to see if there's anything, if there are any other questions that anyone has that uh, we can look to address today, just trying to, to provide as much advice as, as we possibly can um, to let you know about that. I know a lot of people have um, the, our, the, the WhatsApp uh, link, I think, seems to be the, the most popular thing people are looking for. Um, yeah, the Students' Union as well um, will, will be doing and providing information around um, off-campus accommodation. Uh, so they will have uh, different, um, I suppose, Facebook groups available as well. Remember that, I suppose, as international students, you get your offer a, a lot earlier than Irish students. The Irish students don't won't, won't find out which university that they are going to until the middle of August at the earliest. So um, you have uh, a lot more, a lot earlier knowledge of 
when you will be attending um, than many, many of the, the Irish students. So a lot of the Facebook groups won't be populated uh, until much later in the summer. So just um, bear that one in mind. That is something just to, to keep in mind on, on that. Um, I, I would again, um, this question around the, the campus, we, we did a, a webinar on um, campus on the on campus accommodation, it is on YouTube, it, the link is up on the DCU International website, I would go back and have a look at that it was delivered by people from the campus residences team, and they talked a, a little bit about that they do hold a significant number of beds for international students. But yeah, it's just uh, the, the reality is, is that not everybody is going to be able to, to be accommodated on, uh, on campus. So hopefully um, that has answered some questions. I, I'm sure there will be others. I think that um, hopefully it, um, you know, it has provided some clarity, some advice, some ideas around the do's and don'ts. Um, I, I cannot stress enough um, that that last piece, if an offer seems to be too good to be true, it probably is. Um, with Dublin being a major city with the economy booming, there is a huge demand for accommodation. Um, and so people reaching out to you with this wonderful offer, um, it, it, that is probably a scam. So do your due diligence, uh, really dig into it and never, ever transfer money without seeing an apartment in person. And again, a lot of this really um, in terms of searching, in terms of actually getting the accommodation, if you're not on campus and you're not in the purpose built accom uh, accommodation, then it's going to be the case that um, it will be coming to, to Dublin and finding accommodation. Definitely some people have been allocated um, campus accommodation. I, I know that um that for that that definitely some people have because some people have been um in touch around that so um some people have been allocated but i know again if you go back and to that uh, webinar you'll see um them talk that there were a number of different lotteries um, that were going to take place over the the course of the summer we will continue to post on our um where on our um, DCU social media pages, um, both on the main DCU pages and on the DCU International. And once we kind of get into the middle of August, you'll see a lot more activity from the university in terms of um, the, um, I suppose, welcomers and things like that. But as I said, Irish students don't find out for a long time. Um, I, if you've been allocated a place on campus, they should be in touch with you regarding the next steps. I don't know exactly what is expected um, for, um, and, and what the next steps are. There is generally, it's a bit like getting your offer to study. There's generally a, a deadline. There's generally a deposit and you have to accept that. Um, and if you miss the deposit, they will definitely be offering your place to or miss the deadline. They will be offering your place because there is significant demand for on campus accommodation. So um, bear that one in mind. Um, all that remains then is to um, say thank you for joining me. Um, thank you to Jasmine for helping out with uh, with the questions. Um, we will be back with another webinar um, in a few weeks time uh, towards the end of July uh, the 28th, which will talk a little bit about the student supports available at DCU and then we have two more in August uh, before people uh, arrive or before you begin your studies at DCU. Well, thank you all. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Thursday, whatever uh, time it is, wherever in the world that you are, and look forward to talking to you all uh, again soon. Thank you very much.